uh, people don't often realize that Hitler and the Nazis had a tremendous interest in the paranormal too. And that book, The Coming Race, I believe later fueled quite a powerful um, German occult society. And because The Coming Race has got to do with this superior underground race that would rule the world. And um, that book had quite a, you know, that book had an influence on the politics of Germany and maybe even affected the world. But people don't really talk about that book anymore. Well, the, that's true. And uh, it, there's so many bizarre parallels. It's not funny. Uh, there is alchemical books that go back much a long time ago, 400 years at least, that yeah. speak of uh, of a race under the earth like that. I don't know if you know that or not. And no, I, uh, I've never studied those kinds of books. What I was very interested in was um, in Asia, you get a lot of stories about the the underworld, and yes. the most reliable um, <clears throat> the most reliable source I could find was a guy called Rurich who was a, yeah. a Russian. And Rurik traveled extensively. And Rurik wrote lots of books about his travel. Hang on, Jan. And, we're uh, gonna uh, we're gonna take a break here. So I wanna I wanna I wanna get to Nicholas Rurik and uh, and and his good friend Franklin Roosevelt who was also interested in the treasure of Oak Island in Nova Scotia. So uh, I'll be right back. We got Jan Lambrick on on the on the line here and his book hollow planets a great book and uh, i'm jay widener we'll be back to listen to smoke and mirrors radio hour thanks for listening we'll be back in a couple of minutes and we're back with jan lamprick from beautiful country of south africa Talking about his great book, Hollow Planets, a feasibility study of possible hollow worlds. And you can get that on Amazon. It's an expensive book, but worth it. it took me about two weeks to read it, and I read fast. But I wanted yeah. to get it all. Well, I'm so let's say, get back to Nicholas. If you read it in two weeks, that's amazing. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Mr. Rurich. He yes. told some interesting stories. I can't remember the exact details, but they are in my book. But he wrote some. He mentioned some some interesting stories about um, underworld um, people and where he'd heard it. And and he mentioned how how widely held these beliefs were in um, Asia. And in my book, I actually had quite a bit on religion and legends. And there was even a portion of it that somebody intended to turn into a book. But they never wrote their book, but I included it in my book. Which part was that? It had to do... There were some Christians as well. There are various Christians who also believe in um, in the possibility of the hollow earth. The, the Mormons uh, are the ones who push that idea the most. But mm -hmm. um, there were quite a few other things as well. I'd have to actually look it up. Do you ever ever find uh, ever find any uh, uh, Freemasonic lore uh, concerning Hollow Earth, anything like that? No, I did not run into that. No. No. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the uh, you know, there's a lot of strange stories about it, but uh, uh, also your discoveries of, of the mysterious, mysterious. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, indentation on Venus is very interesting. Yes, you know, I must tell you, when I looked at at, um, at the British Astronomical Association journals, those guys had lots of diagrams of things that they'd seen. And some of those things were so completely bizarre. And they just seemed to fall into the whole hollow, hollow planet idea so well. Now, I'm not sure if they were optical illusions or what exactly they were, but I had a, I must tell you, um, writing the chapters on Venus uh, was among the most fun I had when I did the book, and I 
I really went to town drawing diagrams and just wondering whether this really was a hollow planet that you were looking at. Um, Aye. Yeah, it was very bizarre. In fact, in fact, I had other material that I didn't even publish. I, I mentioned in there that, that one day I might write a hollow planet too. And there yeah. were other anomalies as well that relate to the outer planet. And in fact, I didn't write a hollow planet to, I just never got around to it. Other things uh, took my interest here in Africa. But you will still find it in NASA photographs. If you go and you look at NASA photographs, especially of auroras on other planets like uh, Saturn and, and so forth, in on many of the photos of these outer planets, you'll see some pretty strange, uh, hole-like looking things on those planets. It's very bizarre. That's right. And the, uh, uh, the strange hexagonal uh, polar cloud pattern on Saturn is yes, a very odd yes. thing. Very odd, very odd things that are out there. And, yeah, uh, you know, that was... That was the whole thing. When I was digging into this, I, I was, I'd heard these strange stories and I started digging and I started thinking for myself and I was, I was saying to myself, well, you know, could there be evidence that you could find? Because if a planet were hollow, or especially if it happened to have a hole through it, there should be something that you'd find. And it was amazing the strange things that one came across. One of the most bizarre that I came across was, um, uh, was nuclear radiation from the Chernobyl accident in Russia, which was discovered at the South Pole, but it wasn't discovered anywhere else in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, if you know anything about meteorology, um, you'll discover that the way the, the Earth's atmosphere works, air in the Northern Hemisphere does not easily cross over into air in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it might do at very, very high altitudes. But the bottom line was that some scientists actually found nuclear radiation from Chernobyl at the South Pole. And, um, of course, maybe it had also been transported at a very high level. But at the time when I looked at it, I thought, you know, I mean, what else could you look for as possible evidence of a hole through the Earth? Hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know, I, 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 uh, I've looked at a lot of things, a lot of rare uh, literature and and art, and uh, for, over the last twenty years or so. And um, one of the themes that keeps coming back isn't so much that there's a hole at the pole, although there could be a small hole somewhere. But that there's many little holes, if I may, uh, scattered, and that there are forces on the planet who seem to like to seal up those holes, if you know what I mean. And um, and I found a lot of this weird evidence. I'm just saying, you know, it's strange. That's why I got into your your book and this whole subject, not because I, I, I thought that the earth was hollow, but because I kept running into this strange evidence. And uh, well, we'll get back to that and a lot more when, I, uh, when uh, we come back here. Uh, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to come back for two uh, big uh, segments. I'm talking to Jan Lambrick. And do you have a website, Jan? Yes, the website is www.holloplanet.com. I recommend that if people want to buy the book, they would do better to go to a place called HiddenMysteries.com. They okay. have Hid the best uh, HiddenMysteries.com. Buy the book. We'll be right back. I'm Jay Widener. Thanks for listening.